Well, thanks everybody for being here. Uh, for those of you who haven't met, I'm Kevin McPartland. I'm the head of market structure and technology research uh, at Coalition Greenwich. Um, I'm excited. I'm here at TradeWeb in New York uh, with uh, CEO Billy Holt. How are you doing? I'm great. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Really good to see you. Yeah. Um, so we'll jump right in. So you've been CEO for about a year now. Um, any surprises? Mm -hmm. Is a year who's kind of counting. Exactly. Yeah. Any, uh, any surprises, so, parts you like, uh, don't like? They're, they're, <laughs> we have so much to talk about. I'm just trying to think. So we've, you were mentioning we've done this like three or four times. Yeah. Um, I remember the first time I did this with you, I kind of mentioned to you how much I hate doing these kind of things. <laughs> and then I also mentioned like you were the only person I would ever do anything with. So kind of that's still true. I'm flattered. Um, I don't know if this is like the grandest stage that you've ever done something like this on, wow. but it's definitely like trade web home court. So if you ask me two tough questions, you're going to get like booed yeah, here right. uh, quickly. It's a tough audience. To um, yeah. So like, you know, sort of a year and who's counting kind of. Um, you know, what I was thinking about, and I was kind of, when I was sort of walking here um, a little bit ago, I, I was thinking to myself, um, I have this sort of like interesting responsibility, um, you know, because I've been at the company since, since 2000, um, and I was president of the company since 2008. So I feel, um, you know, so proud of the historical roots of TradeWeb. Um, and so the question is sort of like, how do you, you know, correctly honor the roots, you know, of this company and all the special things that we've done um, here? And then how do you really, um, at the end of the day, like strongly position the company like for the future? Like how do you plant that flag sort of like into the next chapter? Um, and it's an interesting challenge. Um, I was thinking about, sort of this concept that when you're when you are the CEO of the company, um, there's an aspect of your own personality becomes sort of like a, a little bit of a stamp on the company. And so what I've tried to do is like 100%, I think, you know, bring my own personality just really around how I think it's exceptionally important to be external um, and to interface and interact, you know, with the most important clients of the company. And you know, to create relationships, um, you know, from my perspective that are significant for the company. And so on some level, you kind of like add that little extra, you know, into the equation. But it's been a great year. Um, you wind up sort of deciding early on, I think, that, you know, you're going to be yourself, um, you know, when, you're, when you do your job. So you don't like go into a phone booth and come out like a different person. Um, well, doing that has gotten you uh, this far. Yeah. So something must be I, I might as well, you know, keep going that way. <laughs> um, I'm wondering if I'm doing it too much, but I might as well, I might as well, I might as well kind of like keep going that way. Um, so you be yourself, you be authentic, and then you really like surround yourself with like a great team. And that's like a big part of it. Sure. And Miss Lee, I had drinks with him uh, a couple of weeks ago. You, you know, you, you work so closely with someone for so long, you develop a sort of bob and weave. We have, you know, with, with Tom and with Sarah, um, Doug Friedman, we have like such an amazing uh, management team here, so it's been lucky. Well, then when you started uh, bonds uh, trading electronically, people probably thought you were crazy and that's never going to work. And yeah. here we are, right? Most of the treasury markets, electronic, mortgages, corporate yeah. bonds. I mean, we can go on and on, but so the last 10 years in particular, right, has been a pretty wild ride. There's this like resistance thing. You know, people, I think you're right, actually. People probably did think we were like a little crazy. Um, and then the people that maybe didn't think that we were crazy, like just didn't really want us to do it, right? Because it working sort of meant like a couple of things, like this business that I run, I work at you know, Morgan Stanley or I work at Goldman or I work at Citi, this business that I run becomes less profitable mm -hmm. as these markets become more electronic and more transparent. You and I have talked about this. One of the more interesting things that's happened really over the last couple of years is not to say that there's no longer like resistance out there, but these businesses that TradeWeb like lives and breathes in have become and are so profitable to the biggest players um, that are in them that that myth on some level has gotten dispelled. It's like we're bit. over the hump where now the business can operate more efficiently with the automation and the electronic trading, right? Than they could before. I think that's. I think that's right. I think the skill set has changed. I think people, you know, now who we interface with our most important clients have much more of a technology kind of background. And I think there's a moment 
where you know you're fighting something that you shouldn't be fighting. Um, that doesn't mean that there's not a massive premium, you know, for TradeWeb and for all of us to make sure, you know, we're having like the highest quality conversations with our clients around the most sophisticated topics. So that need or that ability to be like always on at the right moment, I think is still like a very, very important thing. Agree, and despite the technology innovation, human nature hasn't changed. So like you said, the relationships are different, but they're still Yeah, you know, I, I really think it was you, Kevin, who kind of asked me a question once, and I think it was maybe just you and I kind of like talking, you know, off record, it was like, is, this, is it still, you know, a relationship business kind of all these years later? Because like the relationship side of this, has always been in some ways like the most interesting side just to me personally. And I answered the question to you, which was sort of like, it is still a relationship business. That being said, the relationship component is just sort of like part of the overall like experience of it all, right? And, and technology and the way that technology is delivered into our clients has become, I think maybe, you know, in a certain way, like the most important part of the experience, mm -hmm. but it's still people. Yeah, yeah, you need to trust who is you need to trust who's building your technology or is helping you to decide how to use it. We have this like this like really interesting sort of very basic role that we play as this like intermediary between the most important sort of buy side clients like in the world and their most important counterparties. Mm -hmm. For sure. Right? Um, that's a that's a important kind of place to be. And I always um, sort of sometimes make a point within TradeWeb, which is like we have we have, you know, Pimco is is TradeWeb's customer, but it's also like JP Morgan's customer. Yeah. In some ways, it could be like their most important customer. So the way that you travel around that has to be, you know, in a pretty like knowing and sophisticated way. For sure, to facilitate that interaction, yeah. to trust you yeah. as much as they trust their client. Um, so let's talk about some of the specific markets. So Treasury's first and foremost been particularly in the spotlight really the last three years or so. We're routinely seeing over a trillion dollars trade a day, which is pretty amazing uh, if you look back historically. Um, electronic trading, fully electronic market at this stage, it's hard to argue that. So is there growth there? What is the growth there? So it's like, so I think you're, you're right on that exact frame. I would say like it's fully electronic you know, specifically speaking, like really like on the on the wholesale side, as you know, where, you know, our wholesale business kind of rubs elbows up against, um, you know, CME and our friend, um, you know, from Midtown, Mr. Lutnick, where, where that all, all that interaction happens. Interestingly, um, you know, the client piece of the market still has like a ton of electronification still to go. Mm -hmm. So there still is that like voice business around like larger size trades or more complex trades or even, um, you know, trades where there's an expectation maybe that there's going to be like some negotiation. Off the runs. Perhaps. Off the runs still can be like very, very voice kind of driven. Um, and so we've been, as you can imagine, like massively focused on this kind of like continued like automation of the whole thing. The AI, we call it AIX, obviously, right. where some of these like larger kind of like market moving trades get broken down into more digestible parts and then and then we'll get transacted that way. My overall instinct though is that there still needs to be, I think, developed sophisticated trading protocols that allow for like real like risk trades, block trades that get transacted kind of seamlessly. And what makes this whole thing fun is just the opportunity that exists around continuing to get this stuff right. The complexity of these protocols in some ways is what makes um, you know, our jobs kind of fun. Do those protocols exist now to facilitate the block trading or is that something you feel like you're still building? I think my instinct is it's something that we haven't like perfectly solved for. There are versions of it that exist. We, we launched this protocol, um, you know, specifically in, in Europe or on European swaps called Request for Market, mm -hmm. which kind of like helped a lot of these like really big um, buy side hedge funds like feel more comfortable trading like, like serious, like real risk. But this stuff is like evolving. And if someone said to me, have we nailed it, nailed it, I would say probably not yet. And again, some of that comes, some of that opportunity will come from, you know, really like hands-on interesting conversations that we will have as a company with our most important clients. Um, we have like great ideas here, but rarely are the ideas just like happen in isolation. They really happen through sort of the proper back and forth 
with how we interface with clients. My instinct is like that's probably like the best thing we do. Sure. Um, so the cousin to treasuries is repo. A lot of repo talk in the in the world today yeah. as well. Clearing and other oversight from the from the regulator. So where are you with repo? How electronic is that? What do you think it's about clearing? Right. It's like a, it's still like a sort of like interesting and fragile world. And when I say that, my my brain goes back to moments in time that you you and I have talked about, like the around the financial crisis where. You know, the story was, you know, as the crisis was like unfolding, you know, people like Jamie Dimon and Lloyd Blankfein were like more focused on like repo rates as an indicator of like the health of the system of it all right. than they were anything else. If you were like trading repo or running the repo business like back then for one of those banks, you suddenly had like the most important job in the world, right? Repo market's like still like so, so important. What makes it interesting for us, you know, is that it's, it's still largely voice driven. Um, we have the ability to kind of scale and leverage that business because of the role mm -hmm. that we play with our sister brother market in government bonds. Um, a lot of the clients have have an overlap, you know, and obviously, you know, the hedge fund community, which is very reliant in some ways on leverage, mm -hmm. plays an instrumental role around repo. So we do, you know, a lot of kind of like very quantitative analysis and very specific analysis around how we see a market opportunity developing for itself. We also sometimes just like listen to like very like basic reason. Sure. Is it a big market? Can we play a role in actually like succeeding in it? And do we understand and know like the customers? We try to get like a few of those like just very basic things right. Sure, sure. So the last part on treasury, it's a lot of talk about the basis trade. Yeah important for price discovery for sure and liquidity in the market, but the regulators seem nervous. Do you think that's, are they, are they worrying about nothing? Is there something there? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't, it, it's, I wouldn't say like, I wouldn't always out of instinct dismiss it as worrying about nothing. That being said, our feeling and our instinct is this is a extremely important trade in the market. We're gonna play a larger and larger role around that trade. It's had you know, very important consequences uh, around that trade in terms of like general health of liquidity in the treasury market. The smartest and most sophisticated sort of institutions in the world are heavily involved around that. And we think it's an important um, you know, piece of the marketplace that will continue to grow. So maybe actually, I was gonna save this to later, but maybe a good point to pivot to your most recent acquisition um, which is pretty cool. Can you tell me about that and what you Raid want to fin. do with it? Raidfin, yeah. Which is a really, it's like R8, like, fin. Like, I figured like, it it's was. It's like almost like a driver's, like a license plate or something. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. going to be your new vanity plate. Yeah, not so, mine, but yeah. So, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, in some ways. So, reading that, it was sort of obvious what the, it, like, it made sense. It fit right in, but what are your plans? Yeah, the, there? the, 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 um, you know, this algorithmic march is like, is like one way. Right, and so we're always a little bit like, um, if we're gonna do a deal, we have very high kind of standards around that. Can we build it? Um, and is there a way for us to access these clients without doing a deal? So we're like kind of tough. You know, bankers don't love us because we're, 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 we're kind of like, you know, picky around this. The IPO wasn't enough. Uh, yeah, IPO wasn't <laughs> enough, short memories. Um, so, so, you know, with Raidfin, we were like, you know, super excited about it because it's like, first of all, it's it's an algorithmic business that is like first and foremost like leading, mm -hmm. right? So you get this opportunity to bring something in house that has this like massive like recognition in the marketplace, right? It's also um, you know amazing technology. So we have our you know we have our technologists like go through it like back and forth and the and the feedback around their technology is just like so so positive and then like the biggest most important clients you know are are their clients and now like our clients together and then from my perspective it's like what's the, like the knock on effect of all of this like what we have access now in a different way than we had before like what are we going to do with this access mm -hmm. Right? How do we like create like ongoing conversations in a way that's going to like benefit the company more and more over time? I just love that concept of creating optionality because my instinct is as a company, when the door opens, like we're able to kind of like get through that door. Um, and so I'm really excited about it. It was a great, great effort and great, uh, great work, 
you know, by our by our deal team and our business side, in part because we're like so selective. Yeah, yeah, you know, on yeah. The stuff. Great access to algos, great access yeah. to the futures market, right? Which yeah. is a bit new for trade yeah. web, but it makes complete sense. Yeah, it's like we can like you know stop making the joke that like we're not going to build like a futures market, obviously, right? But like um, not playing a significant role around that is limiting. Right. And so this is a uh, an interesting way to kind of like have a little bit of a cake and kind of eat it too. I love it. That'll be great yeah. to watch next It'll year. Be fun. Um, so corporate bonds. Yeah. Um, I actually I re totally remember coming to this office. Um, and Billy, uh, Billy, uh, no, I think Lee, I guess, would have Lee gave the like, here we are, we're in corporate bonds yeah. now. Um, it, and here we are, right? And I've watched the charts yeah. as I do, um, and your share increase, it's been fantastic to watch. So, so where are you there? What are you thinking about? We, we had this like really kind of like fun um, town hall this morning, and we we're talking about like this concept of like moving markets like forward. And I was describing like how much I love that word forward, but then I made something, a, a, a sort of maybe like somewhat interesting point, which is like forward doesn't always mean like straight line. Mm -hmm. It's twists and turns. For sure. There's no bigger twist and turn that's been out there from a trade web experience than credit, right? Hard to get right. Yeah. You know, we've tried, we looked for angles, not easy. We had a really smart, uh, really strong view that the market really was ready for like significant competition in the space, that door kind of opened for us. But we hired this, like you know, you know, and brought in and developed, I think, a you know, a great credit team that has built, you know, um, innovations in, in 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 credit that have added significant value, um, you know, to our clients. And by doing that, we're super real in the space. So there's no question anymore, like, is there room, you know, for competition? Like, yes. Um, how far can we take this now? Yeah. Yeah. You what know? I like is what what I, I feel like TradeWeb has done is actually made the whole pie bigger, right? You've come to market, it was portfolio trading, right? You were first and dealer sweeps has been such a success. So like, you've really made the whole I think, pie bigger. You know, I think we've made the whole pie <coughs> bigger. I appreciate you saying that. Um, I think we've made um, market access better. I think they've made us better. I think there's a concept of like competition and all of that being like good for clients. Mm -hmm. So I think that's true. I think firms like Citadel arriving as, as market makers in credit and saying this is a business where we like to win and we are going to plant a flag in this business and be real and invest money because we think this is a big opportunity makes the pie thing bigger as well. For sure. I mean, it couldn't have been, it was less than 10 years ago where if you, we, we talked about non-bank liquidity providers in corporate bonds who were like, no, it's not fast enough, yeah. it's not electronic The, the velocities They're not, not interested there. Right. and everything has changed yeah. now, right? They're fully in. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, the, the most important, interesting thing about all of this now will be like, what's the sort of like a copycat crime around all of this going forward? What's gonna be the imitation is the highest form of flattery? Um, who's gonna be the next kind of like citadel that like comes into the marketplace? Um, it'll be interesting, right? Um, and my general instinct is as these types of firms with that level of sophistication enter into the space, very basic things like hit rates, um, you know, the types of bonds and the quantity of bonds that will now get executed is gonna change dramatically. And again, you have this concept of like the pie kind of really starting to grow. Well, the other interesting part over the last year has been the retail bond market, right? Yeah. Retail investors haven't bought bonds in a decade. There hasn't been any reason to, but now like, it's back. Yeah, it was sort of like, the concept was sort of like, as January of you know uh, 11 months ago hit, it was like bonds are back. Yeah. And then we went through sort of like, you know, another 10 months or 11 months of sort of like shaky performance, you know, from bonds. And now obviously we've had over the last like three weeks or four weeks, like incredible, you know, run of bond performance. I was like in my office a little bit surprisingly to everyone kind of in this room, like early this morning. And I was watching CNBC and there was Jamie Dimon on TV sort of talking about how he think rates, rates are going up. Obviously there's all these like super smart um, you know, people, investors, world-class investors that think rates are coming down. It's this kind of like a concept of like, who knows, but there's really big kind of like diverse sentiment around basic direction of where we're going. But in the meantime, 5% risk-free is not terrible. 5% risk-free is not, is, not, is not terrible. Um, right. 
So, uh, so we have to talk about the whole rest of the world, which maybe we'll try to do in like three minutes or less. But yeah. so uh, emerging markets is a growth area for sure. You bought yield brokers yeah. out in Australia. And um, we've talked about China in the past. Yeah. You were one of the first movers there. So what's interesting to you in the whole thing, rest of the world? You know, um, it, we were like really proud to kind of like hit this year running and do like our first what we would describe as like our first international deal. Um, you know, I think there's a really strong feeling out there that, you know, this company knows how to build and grow markets. I do think in a very like reflect, reflective way, there may be questions like, does the company have like a ton of DNA, not around understanding how to do a deal, around understanding how to really integrate something mm -hmm. that can be complex. And so our team has done you know, truly a wonderful job really at the beginning stages of like integration around Yield Broker. We think that's like a really cool part of the world. Um, and that's gone like very, very well. I think if I look back at this year and someone said to me like, what's been the most sort of like successful thing this company has done? It's a hard question. Um, it's hard on some level to not say this like forward progress that we've made around EM. Yeah. It's like a tough, it's really tough to have, you know, a company based in New York as, you know, really kind of the companies in a certain way, um, you know, home court and be able to execute and build markets in other places in the world and really do it with the same spirit that kind of lives, you know, around the home courtness of New York. And I give our international team our London office, like so much credit. It's like the opposite of a satellite office. Yeah. It's like they're a part of, it's a, it's, a, it's a broader part of, you know, this company in a way that continues to produce like amazing results. It's just another part of headquarters. Another part of headquarters. That's a, good, that's a, that's a really well, good way to say it. Yeah. Yeah. So the last thing I wanted to touch on, I feel like we have to at least for a minute talk about data in general, right? right? Which in some ways powers the algos, it powers the markets. Yeah also has transformed in a decade. There used to be a, a drought of fixed income data. Now there's so much that a lot of the market participants tell us they don't, they don't even know how to handle it or to put it to work. Um, is that a growing commercial opportunity for TradeWeb in addition to it, just what you it, used to support it, your You know, it's a great point and it is. And it's a growing opportunity for us like in a couple of ways through like the, to make an obvious point, like the excellent sort of commercial um, agreement and arrangement that we have with our partners and friends at LSEG Refinitiv, like all of that feels really good to us. And at the same time, I think that we, we understand how to carve out optionality for us to monetize from our perspective, you know, more complex data. It was not that long ago, you know, that, you know, people at TradeWeb would spend time, you know, at buy side trading um, desks and then watch how the clients would do um, you know, do trades and use TradeWeb and then wonder like when they were sending out an RFQ, like why they were including Bank of America or way back when Bear Stearns or Citigroup and then have the customer say like, oh, I just kind of like have my tickets like ordered like by like alphabetical order, right? And now like data is playing like such a bigger, more sophisticated role in a really basic but important way around like how do I find like best acts? How do I find like liquidity in a tough market? How do I find it fast? And now the data is like directing that kind of flow in a way that has like massive amplification effects to our business. Um, and I think it's been one of like the big differentiators that we've been able to kind of bring to the table. It's hard for like the phone to compete with all of that level sure. of sophistication. I'm not guessing where the other side is, like I kind of know. I have to imagine the sophistication under the covers to say here are the brokers you should include is probably beyond like it's probably more than it than it seems. It's 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 sophisticated and in some ways it also like in a in a kind of a cool way it comes back to this concept of like um, you know trust around the data mm -hmm. and trust around what the data is showing you and so yeah um, my instinct is like around a lot of this stuff I use the expression like one way train thing like. This is like one way train, like the, cl the client base is getting more sophisticated, not less sophisticated, sure. right? They're investing more, not less. So this is just all kind of going in the right, in the right direction. So I know you love all your children equally, but what are you excited about most for next year? What are you thinking about for 24? It's like a really cool, something's gonna come. 
On, you know, that's a good question. There's a lot of different sort of like ways I actually would think about answering this, some of which I would sort of um, tell you in private. But <laughs> I would just say like from a business standpoint, um, my instinct is there's gonna be like pretty significant change coming in, back to the expression home court, the government bond market. You would ask me like um, a thousand years ago, I remember in Chicago like, about central clearing and government bonds. And like, I answered it being honest, like it seems to me like this is kind of like ultimately a natural outcome. Yep, I agree. It made like headlines surprisingly because it was almost a controversial statement. Everything you said makes headlines. Here we are, here we are, here we are now. And my instinct is like getting closer. Um, companies like TradeWeb with the leadership position that we have, we have to continue to navigate this complex terrain in a really good, positive, beneficial way for us. Do I feel like we can? Like 100% yes. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how we do it because the confidence level is really high. Yeah, I think the buy side often looks to the dealers to help solve those problems and the dealers to a large extent will look yeah. to you to provide the infrastructure. Yeah, there's a little bit of like everyone kind of pointing at each other sort of, but you know, we've, we've gotten sort of stronger and more concise and more rigorous and our influence and our ability to have a loud voice around this um, unfolding regulation is at the highest level. Tom Pluto, who I know you know is, yep. is on the board of, um, at SIFMA, he's just like such a very strong kind of industry presence. All that stuff just adds from our perspective like massive credibility. So uh, almost time for a uh, holiday break. Um, any plans, good reading, podcasts, shows? Like give us some, give I, us a recommendation. I'm like hoping to maybe like follow like your emerging <laughs> podcast um, <laughs> backgrounds. But I like, as the company knows, like I was an English major in college. So I like read a lot. Um, and I'm always trying to read um, as many sort of like interesting kind of business oriented books as I can. It's fun to learn. For sure. I'm having a harder time learning as I play with my phone more often, <laughs> as I'm sure we all are. Your kids can put the screen I, time I, I try to like, for I you. try to like put my phone like in another room when I'm reading. I'm reading, I just started reading um, this like amazing sort of like what I would almost describe as like an expose on Bridgewater. Oh, the fun. Called The Fun. Yeah. Um, really strong journalism. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit of a page turner. It's kind of like an interesting back and forth on sort of like what the culture of that firm was like. And I'm without opinion on it, but just like super fascinated reading about it. Um, yeah. Incredible story. That's great. It's on yeah. my list already. Yeah. So now I'll bump it up yes. even further. Yes. Uh, great. So I think we're good. Yes. Um, it was really great to talk great to, to you. too. Thanks for thanks being for, candid for and all the great answers. Within, within the trade me. web world. Thanks Thank for having you. me to the office. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Kevin's awesome, everyone. Great guy. Thanks. thanks.